Very well. Now we were just speaking about poaching around game parks and game reserves, but there is also a risk that comes along or is tagged along. You doing business across or nearby or even close or within the game parks or game reserves. What are those risks that could come along after you trying to try to find your luck or greener pastures uh, getting income from around there? We're heading to how appropriate of lodges uh, gutted by the fire blamed on to the Uganda Wildlife Authority. Now in August 2021 fires from the game parks destroyed a property belonging to Park View Hotel and a fortnight ago owners of uh, Mazike Valley lodged uh, Mazike Valley Lodge also got into gutted by fire and thus recording losses. The Parliamentary Committee on Trade, Tourism and uh, Industries met proprietors of hotels and lodges who lost their properties on fire to national uh, to the Queen Elizabeth National Park. And according to them, uh, Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth National Park as Uganda Wildlife Authority was responsible for these hotel made losses. Let us have a listen and a look at this story. We do return to speak about what losses you're bound to make or what risks you're bound to make when you decide to do business within, close or amidst the game parks or game reserves. Honorable Kate Shumba Dixon, the proprietor of Parkview Hotel, one of the victims, claims all evidence shows that fire came from the park and he lost properties as a result of fire. He suggested that the ministry should cooperate with the private sector to help each other because they need each other's government. They need tourism for revenue and as the lodge owners, need the guests. The fire starts from the National Park by Ua as part of management of burning and spread to the lodge. That's question number one that the committee should interest itself in. And I'll talk about it. If that question is yes, Ua is culpable and takes responsibility, 100%. The second scenario is, did the fire start outside the park, as the minister has elaborated, cross the park and came and burnt my lodge? If that is the case, who takes responsibility and who is culpable? And I really take exception to the minister drawing parallels with the hotel being burnt in Kampara and an owner claiming KCCA. It's really very unfortunate. Kate Shumbo say the Uganda Wildlife Authority was involved in burning of vegetation in the week leading up to the fire outbreaks, according to the satellite images. He adds, the fire that burned the lodges was from the parks. I need you to, re to interest yourself in the satellite images of Ua for the whole week for you to appreciate that what they are telling you are totally lies. The whole week Ua was burning the park. As a matter of fact, two days before fire had come, that lodge was supposed to be burned a few days before. But Uwa quickly came and put it off. We have the evidence. Meanwhile, the representative of Mazike Valley Lodge reveals that they continue to face challenges as they are immediate neighbors to the park and they lost their main restaurants and two cottages and this affected their business. We as a lodge, uh, we were informed the day before that uh, they are going to burn. And actually, on the following day, they burned. We put all we could in place to fight the fire and we were not able to stop the fire. Uh, the lodge was destroyed. We lost uh, our main area, the restaurant, uh, the bar. We lost the kitchen and uh, we lost two more cottages. So we couldn't operate because most of the sensitive areas were burnt down. You cannot house a client when you don't have a kitchen, when you don't even have a restaurant where you can sit them. 
So as we even speak now, we are out of business. We cannot host a client. We have lost property. We have lost business. And then all we hear, all, all that you see on ground that UA is doing is to protect themselves. However, the Ministry of Tourism and the Uganda Wildlife Authority denies the allegations that the fire was because of them. The Minister of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities, retired Colonel Tom Butime, says that the investigations are still going on and if it's really true that the fire was caused by Uganda Wildlife Authority and the investigations proves they will compensate them. When I heard of this fire, <coughs> they said Parkview Hotel has been burnt. You must compensate. I said, well, take it easy, let us investigate, isn't it? Take it easy, let us investigate. If the investigation leads and satisfies the authorities, isn't it? The investigators that fire came or was started or emanated from the National Park under the responsibility of UWA, then we are cap capable, isn't it? Some wonder the executive director, Uganda Wildlife Authority, revealed that they are not ruling out the issue of compensation as they are still reviewing the matter of both cast scenarios to decide whether to compensate or not. Uh, Parkview Hotel. The issue of Parkview is that the fire began from a neighbor's uh, garden. There was harvesting of uh, honey and then came through the park and entered the lodge and unfortunately burnt it, which we regret. And um, those, those are really the facts about Parkview. Mazike, the burning that happened last week is still under investigation. When we get the report, we will make a decision. It's compensation, because until the matter is re reaches an end, do you decide what to do? So I'm not saying no compensation, I'm not saying compensation, because the matter is not resolved. When it is reach, we reach the conclusion, the determination will be made then. The committee was directed by the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Anita Among, to investigate how fire gathered the two lodges. They have several times met on site and with stakeholders to find a lasting solution. Very well, and uh, there you can also throw your comments around there. Sorry for the loss, for those who have lost, especially for Mazike, Mazike Lodge. Mm, Mazike Valley. Mazike Valley last week, uh, two weeks back, it's, it was Mazike. Uh, in August, it was Parkview Hotel in mm. the same area of Queen Elizabeth. Mm. So, and um, I can only imagine if I told you are uh, a businessman at a time when tourists are now actually, uh, foreign tourists are coming in, domestic tourism has been growing. It's time, time for you to you do business. To do business, serious business. Now you're, you're going out mm. of business, and I quote, mm. he was saying, We are out of business because the uh, restaurant area and we are out, we've lost property and, and mm. we are out of business. And we even have a lot of celebrations coming up. Easter, uh, the Easter season is ahead of us in our uh, in, in I mean, April. It, so. When Easter mm. celebrations do they mm. go to game parks? Yeah, people no, people actually go there uh, to celebrate uh, during that period. People take their families uh, to, uh, oh, to, to a the day game out parks. Mm. in For the game actually parks. three days from uh, Good Friday till Easter Monday, maybe to most of the people. So that is why when he says we are out of business, we are running out of business. This is one of the things he's actually trying to mean. Mm. And uh, I believe uh, he, they actually feel it is mandatory for government to compensate them. And this is where I ask, mm -hmm. does government need the private sector to mm -hmm. run business? Greatly. Because Honorable Katashumba says, see there, Honorable Katashumba believes mm -hmm. that as government uh, has actually not been helping uh, them mm -hmm. in terms of the people actually own these, uh, the issue of the hospitality and leisure mm -hmm. around the game parks. Because remember, uh, government has gazetted these game parks uh, but the most important part is once the tourist has gone through the game parks, where are they going to rest from? Mm. Where are they going to refresh from? And this is where the private sector 
comes in uh, to construct these particular lodges and hotels around there and uh, recreation centers around the same areas. Mm -hmm. uh, but however, uh, Kateshumba believes government has, is actually, has not helped them whatsoever. He firmly says that government, he actually says the Uganda Wildlife Authority was is responsible for burning. Okay. So it is the Uganda Wildlife Authority that burnt, according to satellite images that they have mm. as Parkview Hotel. But even uh, uh, according to according to Mazike, uh, the um, the representative there at Mazike Hotel mm. Lodge, uh, no ho Hotel Lodge. He's actually representing the owner who is not in the country. Okay. Mm. According to him, he says they were informed before that there is going to be a fire, mm. but I think the time was not enough. For example, if they had informed them maybe two days prior, but they were informed uh, a day before, that is maybe even less than 24 hours. Because if we are to count 24 hours, that means someone is going to come either very early in the morning, mm -hmm. which is very impossible at some point. So that means they were given less hours to really prepare. So mm -hmm. they tried what they could to cover up. But here is what then to talk about or consider as a business person if you want to venture into tourism. Mm -hmm. Is it worth taking? Is it worth the risk, you know, trying to invest towards or inside or even a midst or close to national parks, game reserves, game parks? Is it worth it? Mm -hmm. If you can if you can see a hotel like um, a lodge like Maziki losing mm -hmm. almost everything you have invested all your energy at some point. That means if it's, what if it's not going to be compensated? That means you have to begin from a grassroots because mm -hmm. you have to consider two sides as a business person. Well, apparently, there is either going to be a compensation mm -hmm. or there is going to be none. Now, there's also a funny twist in this, uh, quite an interesting scenario in that, according to authorities mm -hmm. from Uganda Wildlife Authority, mm -hmm. uh, they do believe that if you are set to actually uh, start up a kind, uh, this kind of business around the game park, mm -hmm. you need to prepare for risks attached. And uh, An one elephant of which could come and knock you. Could come and knock you. <laughs> so how prepared are you in such scenarios? They're not ruling out the, uh, the idea of compensating, but they're trying to help these people understand that when you look at these fires, when they actually did some, uh, let's say, Home, uh, let's say their homework on most of these lodges, mm. they realize they are not ready for any, uh, they're for not protection. ably ready. Okay. If at all fire guts the whole sit situation. Now imagine okay. whereby fire is not caused by the game park and maybe caused by the it's own. It's a wildfire. Uh, it's just not even the wildfire. Mm. It may come from within the lodges or the hotels. How prepared are they themselves? Because remember also, they will also be putting I uh, could put a fire stay. extinguisher. Mm. So they believe Isn't their, it enough? They believe their equipment was, is not enough. Okay. okay. Uh, and uh, they still feel mm. these people, before they actually go into such a business, they need to prepare ably, mm. uh, be able to secure. Mm. Let's say if uh, the insurance part, uh, part of it comes in, you need to make sure that you have, let's say, one fire extinguisher for may not be future. enough. So you need to have... <laughs> more extinguishers in place you need to have safety gadgets ready for you mm -hmm. in case of anything that will happen it may not be fire this time around what if it is a security related issue mm -hmm. so how prepared are you so this is where the funny part comes in because government says even animals might turn to be mm -hmm. well done they just want to ride over because that is why government is saying we need to first area. <coughs> excuse me it's okay investigation and but also, is that? when you, as you, as you're clearing your throat, <clears throat> Sonko, like, like uh, we're saying here, for example, you, you're living in a game park, you're living in a game reserve, and this is not only to the people doing business, but mm. to also neighboring, uh, neighboring communities, because we have seen scenarios where, especially around Kasese areas, uh, when uh, the elephants had to leave the game park and go eating people's crops. So you will realize. <laughs> <laughs> elephants, elephants. I think Thailand has. Every time I see a Thailand movie, I see them fighting with elephants, uh, fighting for elephants. Uh, so when you mention of the let elephants, let me drive my point from some that. course. So away from uh, living around there, you will realize that you will need a protection uh, keep alert equipment. If not keep alert equipment, you will need you yourselves to keep alert. You're living near, uh, for example, 
even away from uh, water bodies. For example, we're going to head into a rainy season. You know when it rains, when there's a downpour, that means uh, places are bound to landslide, places are, are, are bound to eros uh, erosion or even flooding. But how are you going to always be ready for such risks? So this is where I also at some point blame it to you at some point. Because mm -hmm. if you know the consequences that are going to come uh, prior you living in that particular area or you setting up a business in that particular area, you have to always be ready. If uh, they were informed at least a day before, that means even when there was no time really. But if they had equipped, if they were equipped before, if they had maybe covers, because at least I've seen movies, there is... Um, and there is something they cover. It's not like a blanket, but if you see wildfires, there is something they cover at least to control fire, a bouncing back to where it's coming from. So you see fire bouncing back. So in case such equipment is already there, you will still be in business. But I'm not saying, uh, I'm not trying to be bitter here. I'm still saying sorry to the business people who have lost it. But it's not too late for you to move ahead. Do not wait for government compensation. What if it takes long to come? Exactly. And it take long, by the way. Very, and we head into another mm -hmm. story here of uh, the status of the old taxi park, which also comes along with a lot of hopes, great hopes for the transportation community and also fears, because some people do not know what next after maybe conflictings that are arising around there. But the Lord Mayor warns on the city tycoons over uh, the uh, pact uh, partitioning of the uh, of the park around there. The Kampala City Council Authority held a council meeting to solve the issue of the status of around the old park, hence setting up uh, a Cheson tycoon from taking it, which is almost, uh, according to them, tycoons are already petitioning and scrambling for it. Scramble and petition of so Africa. Uh, now this is scramble and petition of the taxi park land by those who claim ownership of it. Government, where are you? Please. <laughs> Let us have the story on how the fight and also resolving of this issue is uh, faring and also what to expect. But you can also share your opinion on what you think. Who should take the lead on this race? The Lord Mayor of Kampala, Salongo Arias Lukwago, held a discussion meeting to solve the issues of Old Tax Park, where tycoons want to own it. And while addressing journalists, he revealed that KCCA got lease of 99 years of operating in that place as the Old Tax Park. Lukwago also said that the tycoons want to own the Old Tax Park and is constructing shops, in which he said it is a wrong move. There is a risk of public land. There is such covenant. We need to fastly develop that actual property within five years. Failure to do so, that means lapses. If you don't develop within five years, you are not entitled to extension for a full lease, for a grant of a full lease of 49 years. How many years are we talking about since 2005? To get, you can, you can count for yourself. Uh, this is all we are of. This is all the tycoons who not take possession of this works for the last 16 years. Furthermore, Arias Rukwago said that the office of the Lord Mayor will write to the Minister for Local Government, reminding him of the confines of his docket, which is the local government, and also to bring to his attention the provision of S6A and S50 of the KCCA Act, which vests the power of levying and collecting tax to the council. The Lord Mayor further revealed that the tax levied on the taxi operators is illegal and blasted the Minister for Local Government, Rafael Majezi, for implementing the tax levies without authority of KCCA. That tax is illegal, just like uh, the former tax we had, which had been put in place by Jennifer Simakula MCC, the former ED, without going through, through the processes provided for under the law, including approval by council. At least 13 individuals and companies own plots on the periphery of the old tax park, according to the 2021 Kampala Capital City Authority report on the status of the facility. Story compiled by Samuel Chirimunda for SMB. Thank you, Chair Monda, for that uh, report com uh, completion around there. But also moving <coughs> further, we look at how, hmm, I don't know even how to say this, mm. disruptions of uh, progress, how can I say it? Two years it was not operating, for the last two years. 
the same and there was back. silence mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. you know land ownership this petitioning and mm -hmm. also land grabbing or land conflicting around this old park started mm -hmm. when government uh, or kcc started saying what we're going to uh try to reconstruct or to try to renovate the park mm -hmm. that's when now that we started by the way it was mm. and we have seen a success you see already the taxis have which find the place mm. but is it that we do not want development what is it i believe internal fights uh, like you're seeing these people are, are petitioning and scrambling for what does not belong to them <laughs> you see most of the tycoons mm. because when you look at the details coming up mm. it is said that at least 13 individuals and companies mm. own plots on the uh, on the periphery of the old taxi park mm. so you can imagine 13 stakeholders in one old, in one park hey, so that means everyone has a plot so at any one point someone will just come and say i'm setting up a shop here i'm setting up <laughs> uh, my business here mm. and uh, so you will still wonder does this still belong to the city council authority or it was already completely sold off because one of the reasons as to why most of the taxi operators were actually co uh, crying out to government why it took so long to reopen mm -hmm. even after accomplishment is uh, there was fear for such scenarios the internal conflicts that were already there mm -hmm. ongoing as people were actually trying to own the old taxi park uh, and uh, the owners claim that uh, uh, they they don't come out uh, boldly, you know, to support their initiative at some point. That's mm. the challenge. At least I've tried uh, once in a while chasing a story here and there with the proprietors of this that say, uh, you know, they, this belongs to them. They do not want to disclose. Mm. But when you do not want to disclose an information that really is out there and impacting a lot of lives, to me at some point there is a question. But there are also allegations that are forefronted always that you know uh, the government sold uh, a part of it and uh, when you sell you have to get out of business but what is happening here they are claiming that government made them a business that is the claim that is happening with the old taxi park around here. But again, when you look at or when you talk to KCCA, they will tell you, you know what, we are still resolving that. That is not the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is just that uh, maybe the tycoons or people do not want development. So there is a lot of conflicting which now I do not want to go there because you do not know who is really right or mm -hmm. wrong here when everyone is giving contradicting part of their story, contradicting stories. Some point as even a media, you fail to, you know, to get a comparison and a factual uh, matter to take on with. But what we are to talk about here is how business is going to be halted down. You can imagine uh, a number of taxis that are sitting on that land that are op uh, operating business there. What is going to happen after that? And this is coming after even KCC and now is warning towards the uh, street parking of the taxis. They do not want you to park now on streets. They have actually been given 14 days to be cleared off streets. Um, I happened to board around Kampala Road when I'm going home in case I'm to use a taxi. Because I know at some point you have to use a taxi, border, border, Uber, or everything. But when I'm to use a taxi at some point, there is a, uh, you find anywhere a taxi would stop. Ogenda, yingi na madam. Bai imbao, they have uh, songs to sing. Fire Kalero, what, da, 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 da. I don't know how they sing to yours. Well, um, they just say Kajansi, Chitende, and Tebe Road. Uh -huh. Like that. But this is going now to stop after 14 days, which we're yet to find out after 14 days if whether this is going to continue happening around the city. But I do not now see it coming into an, an implementation process or program mm. if we are still having a conflict over the park and uh, taxi drivers are still not in a very much security of saying, okay, I'm going to belong to a certain park which is now also in Rango. So business is still on um, a sided, sided, negative, positive. So it's not thriving on very fairly at this moment. So as we conclude, as we head into a break, conclude on that one. Well, I do believe, like you say today, mm. is that in most cases you'll find out that um, there's a reason as to why these particular individuals mm. feel entitled to own the taxi mm. park. So it is uh, it's supposed to be a bold move for both cases here to meet these particular individuals to come out in public to reveal why 
the other individuals claim they own plots in the old taxi park mm -hmm. and also for cases here to reveal why they believe the old taxi park has no private ownership. And uh, to me at some point as we head into a break, I see it as a tactic way of life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to wait until someone establishes a bungalow and you claim out that that is my land. For all those years when the park was disorganized, when there was, there was no drain, a good drainage system, no one was coming out to say, this is mine, this is mine. But after something good has vanished, uh, has, uh, I mean, been, you know, um, visible around there, so you see clay, uh, claiming of it. That means the resources, zeal on that, maybe that comes with a heavy compensation if government is going to compensate anyway. Therefore, we head into a break, but we're expecting a uh, discussion after the break. Do stick with us. This is Smart 24.